And this is a Fox Business Alert. We have breaking news. Dan Berkovitz, the general counsel of the Securities and Exchange Commission, resigned today amid speculation that FTX mastermind Sam Bankman Freed was actually trying to buy off regulators as well as politicians. Now, earlier this week, the Washington Examiner had a terrific piece, a revelation that in October 2021, Berkovitz was wined and dined at a swanky D.C. restaurant by SBF and his top lieutenants. Now, at the time, Berkovitz was commissioner of the Commodity Futures Commission. That's one of the agencies that regulates cryptocurrencies. According to emails that were obtained by the watchdog group Protect the Public's Trust, Berkovitz paid just a fraction of the cost of the dinner. But the real question is whether Berkovitz's switch to the more powerful SEC was arranged by SBF's contacts. Still early in the investigation, but it seems like SBF's insurance might have gone beyond his political contributions. Joining me now is Droy Murdoch, senior fellow at the London Center for Policy Research, Research and Fox News contributor. So, Droy, it, there's definitely enough smoke here for a House investigation after January, right? There's a lot of smoke. You know, when we talk about this sort of thing, we have a couple problems or potential problems. One is corruption. You know, was this Berkowitz guy, you know, on the take? Is he a crook? Or maybe he's an honest and, and uh, you know, decent individual, but you, you have the appearance of, uh, of uh, corruption. The appearance of corruption is the kind of thing that grinds down uh, the public faith in institutions. Either one's a problem, and, and lawyers know you're not supposed to have e e at least the, not even the appearance of impropriety, and this at least appears improper. Look, it'd be one thing if he said, look, come into my office, we'll have a nice discussion, we can talk about what your concerns are, and ke we'll keep that in mind as we regulate uh, your company or industry. But having these lovely dinners at a, a beautiful uh, uh, Indian restaurant in Washington, D.C., that's the kind of thing that makes people think that uh, some monkey business is afoot. And, Deroy, there's another piece of this whole uh, scenario, which is that another participant at that dinner was uh, FTX general counsel, the general counsel for SBF. Uh, his name is Ryan Miller. I may be mispronouncing his first name, but Mr. Miller worked before he was with FTX. He worked with SEC chairman Gary Gensler when Gensler was head of the CFTC. So these regulators, you know, they work for these uh, organizations, these federal organizations, and they come out in the private sector, make their money with somebody like SBF. Uh, and then maybe even use their old contacts with the agencies. It's, it really is a, a more the definition of what the swamp is, right? Yeah, absolutely. The swamp, or to use a different metaphor, it's, you know, the classic revolving door of people going in and out of the private sector into the government, yeah. back in the private sector, uh, you know, make a little bit of money in the government. That sets you up to make a lot of money in the private sector. Uh, and then you've got, of course, uh, these uh, lovely uh, uh, outings to D.C. restaurants and elsewhere. Uh, and again, at, at worst, it's corrupt. At, at, at the very least, it looks funny. And that sort of thing is, is what leads people, it's the kind of thing that leads people to believe we've got sort of a rigged system. Uh, not good for the American people. It's like the old and, scenario. Uh, the, the new GOP Congress can come in. It's like the old scenario of the, the prosecutors the who are prosecuting. Congress can investigate this the better. Yeah, but it's like old prosecutors who prosecuted drug dealers and then they get out of uh, be the prosecution business and start defending the drug dealers. I mean, you, you see that revolving door and it, That's it, right. it just it may not be illegal. We don't want to prejudge anything, but it definitely deserves investigation. Well, speaking of the swamp, let us yep. talk a little bit about this swampy bill that just passed through the House. To, I think it's going to add up to about $2 trillion, by the way, because the, the CBO hasn't, hasn't been able to price it yet. But once they do, it's, it's, it always prices up, right? Uh, very often goes up. And <clears throat> what you basically had is Congress buying something without a price tag on it, and not for, you know, a couple million dollars, but as you say, $1.7 trillion. Could be true $2 trillion. Who knows even more? Uh, this bill is 4,155 pages. That's three times as long as War and Peace. And uh, to me, the big villain, the, the major villain in this story is uh, is uh, Senator McConnell, this so-called GOP, quote, leader, unquote. Uh, he very easily could have said, look, we're not going to go along with this. The GOP Congress comes in 11 days from now. Oh, that's a week from Tuesday, we're going to give Kevin McCarthy and the Republicans a chance to write a budget that doesn't spend all this money, uh, have things in it like the Michelle Obama trail, a plankton study. Uh, there will be money for the U.S. border versus this bill, which has no money for the U.S. border, <clears throat> but does have money for the uh, border control in Egypt and Jordan. Yeah. Rather than let that happen, Mitch McConnell just sat down with his pal Chuck Schumer and said, OK, let's castrate the GOP House, which just got elected, and tie their hands through October 1. There will be no power of the purse in the U.S. House 
until October 1st for 10 months. Mm -hmm. This is abominable, and I bl blame Mitch McConnell completely for this. He could have stopped this. He didn't. Shame on him. The sooner he goes back to Kentucky, the better. DeRoy, he said he was proud of it. He said he was proud of this bill, that it represented the interests of the Republican Party. I thought fiscal responsibility was one of the key interests of the Republican Party. Uh, I don't think this represents the uh, interest of the GOP. I think it's uh, a complete uh, uh, attack on the interests of GOP. It's, this is there's nothing fiscally responsible about this, and, and the, the fact that uh, in term not just the spending all, but to deprive the GOP House of the power of the purse, which is probably the biggest power it has, and not because look, it'd be one thing if the GOP House didn't come into power until August. Okay, we can wait two months. Big deal. Ten months, they will not be able to say, look, uh, FBI, you're not getting any any money until you tell us what you did regarding the censorship of the Hunter Biden laptop story. Uh, look, HHS, you don't get any money until you tell us everything you know about the COVID. COVID-19 origins, right. et cetera. And That's the White great. House doesn't get any money until you, you hand over documents. This is what oversight is. And for 10 right. months, about half the time <clears throat> for which they were elected, they won't have that power. Thanks to Mitch McConnell and his complete uh, perfidy. Biggest traitor on the right is Mitch McConnell. You Shame know, that, on him. That's a terrific point, that they, they've lost the leverage power that they would have had uh, to enforce the, the, the kind of rules that they we're going to need as we see these, these investigations go into fast speed, particularly on things like FTX and what Sam Bankman Friedman was doing and, and all that kind of stuff. I mean, we need leverage to, to get people to do things, and a lot of that leverage is now gone. It's, it's, it's a damn shame. DeRoy Burnock. Uh, yeah, and it wasn't, I, I agree, go ahead. it wasn't lost, it was given away by Mitch McConnell. All right. Mitch McConnell gave it wasn't lost. Mitch McConnell gave that away. Yeah. Terrible. Shame I on hope him. over this holiday weekend you're going to be able to take care of that. It sounds like you have what a lot of people here have, the same disease that's been making rounds. So take care of yourself. <laughs> Enjoy Christmas. Have a wonderful holiday. Thank